Well, I'd like to welcome you all. Uh, thank you for coming. My name is Andrew Becker, and I am a senior security consultant with a firm called ISEC Partners. I have uh, experience in web and mobile application security. Uh, I've recently uh, had a focus in cloud computing. Uh, last year, along with researchers uh, Alex Stamos and Nathan Wilcox, I presented a talk called Cloud Computing Models and Vulnerabilities Reigning on the Trendy New Parade. And in that talk, I focused on, um, on infrastructure as a service, cloud computing models, and specifically uh, threats to uh, threats to random number generation and the generation of entropy uh, in, in infrastructure as a service cloud computing providers. So today we're going to be talking about Hadoop, and uh, this, is, this is our agenda. I'm going to start with a conclusion, and I'm going to talk about Hadoop at just the most extreme high level uh, for those of you in the room unfamiliar, and then we'll talk about kind of the old school Hadoop risks. What, what did things look like before uh, the core developers started uh, implementing a security feature set? Then we'll talk about the new approach that the core developers have taken. Uh, I will enumerate my concerns. Uh, we'll talk about one alternative strategy, and then we'll talk a little bit about what to do if you are a security consultant and you come across uh, Hadoop on a network that you're pen testing or as part of an application that you're reviewing. So let's start with the conclusion. Why am I starting with the conclusion? Well, I just, I really feel like we need to clear the air, right? I was going to answer a question here. I was going to say, um, you know, did Hadoop get any safer? And uh, what I'd say is they, they built a foundation, right? That's kind of, kind of a weasel. But um, originally, the only way to safely uh, deploy Hadoop was with extreme and strict network segregation. And so now, um, the only way to deploy Hadoop securely is with uh, extreme and strict network segmentation. So, um, but they're on the right track, right? They've built a foundation, and I think there's a, there's a lot of material to work with. Uh, some of the gaps are in the design, some in the implementation, and some in the documentation. But uh, but it's 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 headed in the right direction, I think. So let's talk about Hadoop. All right. So, well, what is Hadoop anyway, and why do we care about it? Why why am I standing up here? Why why is it of interest? Let's take a really simplified view. So for those of you who are just completely unfamiliar with Hadoop, it's, um, Hadoop is an alternative to the, the SQL orthodoxy that has dominated application development for millennia, right? It's, it's one of these kind of no SQL type uh, alternatives to, to SQL. And so organizations that have petabytes of data uh, use Hadoop uh, to, to analyze that data. So uh, in the 90, or so in, in the Apache Foundation's uh, Hadoop project, there is the uh, Hadoop uh, file system, which is uh, made up of data nodes and name nodes, and they give data access. And then we have uh, the MapReduce engine, which is made up of two primary components, and that is, uh, there is the job tracker. Uh, users submit jobs to the job tracker, and those are assigned to task trackers, which are as physically close to the data as possible, and this is very important for, for Hadoop performance. And then uh, while these are the primary components of a Hadoop cluster, uh, there are other optional services like workflow managers, of which there are several now, or uh, bulk data distribution, which is used to uh, even out data distribution across the cluster, because it's, it's, it's essential to performance that data is replicated. So this is a simplified view that neither breaks things down well along functional lines nor along machine boundaries, but it's just intended to kind of give you a map of what Hadoop looks like. So we've got a user talking to a job tracker, and that, that's kind of the edge of Hadoop, right? Users interact with that job tracker, and then the job tracker communicates with task trackers, Task trackers commu compute, uh, communicate with HDFS. HDFS can be subdivided down into the, the individual nodes. So Hadoop is in use at many of the world's largest online media companies, including Yahoo, Facebook, Fox Interactive Media, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Uh, Hadoop is entering the enterprise, as evidenced by Hadoop World 2009 presentations from Booz Allen Hamilton uh, and J.P. Morgan Chase. And Hadoop is making its way into the federal government. Uh, last year, the NSA uh, disclosed that they're using Hadoop uh, in a system for intelligence analysis and to link disparate, uh, disparate sources of intelligence data. So as you can see, Hadoop has come a long way from when it, when it backed an open source search engine, which was storing public data. You know, back then, uh, there was no reason for a security model, but uh, things have changed considerably. 
So let's talk about the Hadoop that was, right? Why, why was all this effort expended? Uh, Hadoop, Hadoop did not have a security model. As I said, it backed an open source search engine. It was generally used for, for public data. And so what I'm about to talk about are the, the old school risks to Hadoop and uh, what, the, uh, what the developers are trying to mitigate now. So one thing is Hadoop performed insufficient authentication. It didn't authenticate users properly. It didn't authenticate services properly. Uh, the Hadoop file system, uh, the way it worked is the client would basically use the Unix who am I utility, right? And it would find out that the user is Bob and then it would then, you know, over the network request Bob's data. <laughs> so an attacker just as easily as, as Bob's client could say, hi, I'm Bob, you know, give, give me Bob's data. So as you can see, HDFS file permissions were easily circumvented and, uh, and the only thing that really stood in the way that the attack wasn't quite that simple because attackers needed to discover a particular uh, piece of data it has a block ID associated with it. If this block ID was discovered, then you could access the data. That's not an extremely high bar, right? That's, that's complexity. That's, that's not actually a security boundary. And also, write access was not limited in any way. So there wasn't any privacy and no integrity either because uh, there were not secure transports in use. Uh, so information could be sniffed on the network, information could be modified. Uh, so we can, we can see there are some issues there. Uh, arbitrary code execution. So because there was not sufficient authentication or authorization, pretty much anyone could submit uh, code to a job tracker, which would then be executed with the level of permissions of that job tracker, which was generally a fairly privileged user on that, on that physical host. Uh, so this, you know, this is the legacy that Hadoop has. And so what, is, what does this mean, what are these particular threats, these particular risks, right? So um, let's say Alice has access to a Hadoop cluster and Bob has access to a Hadoop cluster. Alex and Bob have to trust each other completely because either one can impersonate the other. But, uh, but if Mallory gets access to the, to the cluster, um, Bob and Alice, they, they both die in a fire, right? It's, it's that bad. There, there is no security in place. So let's talk about the new approach. You know, what, what, what are we talking about here? Because in 2009, the discussion about Hadoop security really reached a boiling point. And there were a number of talks at Hadoop World uh, this past fall about security, a number of approaches. And so the core developers of the Hadoop project decided that they were going to perform strong mutual authentication of, of users and services. But it was going to be transparent to end users, right? And also they were going to help everyone out and introduce a new workflow manager called Uzi. And so that's what we're going to talk about now. So to quote, um, to quote the developers, uh, or, or actually probably some, some PR person somewhere, uh, this update uh, integrates Hadoop with Kerberos, a mature open source authentication standard. Right? So the developers chose to use Kerberos uh, via GSS API to authenticate to edge services. I was talking about the, the job tracker earlier. Uh, when a user connects to a job tracker, they're authenticated, uh, and then the operating system principles are matched to a set of user and group permissions. These user and group permissions are stored in flat text, uh, flat text files uh, on the job tracker. So as you can see here, um, you know, it, it depends on the, the strength of your, of your Kerberos deployment to some extent, and so I would, I would I uh, encourage everyone to see uh, the presentation that was given yesterday um, uh, about attacking Kerberos. Um, I think uh, they'll explain how simply adding a, a dash of Kerberos does not magically make, uh, make a secure network. So it, it wasn't feasible uh, to meet their performance requirements to use Kerberos completely. Uh, internal to the cluster between name nodes and data nodes and, and the job tracker, uh, they use uh, various, various tokens, right? They don't want the KDC to become a bottleneck. So each of these tokens is extremely similar in structure and uh, relies on HMAC SHA-1. So delegation tokens uh, get used to connect to the name node in order to gain access to data that's stored in HDFS. Block access tokens are used to secure uh, communication between the, the name node and the data nodes. And that's actually where HDFS file system permissions are enforced because, um, yeah, file, file system permissions in, in a distributed uh, file system like HDFS, is, it's an extremely difficult problem. So they try to provide a gateway that, that performs those checks. Uh, 
And then finally, the job token is used for uh, communication between the MapReduce engine task tracker and individual tasks that are, that are operating. It's important to note that, so we're talking about symmetric encryption here, right? We're talking about HMAC SHA-1, and so there's a shared key involved, and the shared key is gonna have to get distributed to tens, hundreds, thousands of hosts, right? And so it's gonna depend on how uh, the key is, is distributed, correct? So there were some limitations stated uh, when, when this design was introduced, and this comes from the Hadoop Security Design Paper, uh, which was released by Owen O'Malley and, uh, and his uh, fellow, um, fellows at uh, Yahoo. And so one thing they said was the degradation of grid mix performance, and that's just a, a specific performance benchmark for Hadoop, uh, should be no more than 3%. So they're, they're extremely sensitive to performance hits. Uh, users will not have access to root accounts on the cluster or on machines that are used to launch jobs. Uh, we talked about all that symmetric crypto that, that would fall apart if users could, could steal the, the shared keys, right? And HDFS and MapReduce will not travel over untrusted networks, and so this is key, right? They're, they're, by default, they're going to be using unsecured transports, and, and they say, well, you know, trust your network, and that's, that's essentially what we had to do before. We had to trust our network. Now, we have to trust our network. So what are my concerns? Um, I, have, I have a number of concerns, but chief among them is uh, our, uh, a poor default Kerberos uh, quality of protection, which I'll explain, uh, the symmetric cryptography in use, um, an incomplete implementation of a pluggable web uh, UI authentication scheme, and then also the use of IP-based authentication. So we talked about the performance concerns uh, that the developers had, and the default Kerberos quality of protection um, is, is set to authentication only. So communication between the user and the job tracker will just be authenticated, and it does not protect the privacy or the integrity of that communication. So there's kind of three options you have, authentication, integrity, privacy, and they've chosen authentication. And now um, it remains to be seen that there is support uh, in the code, although um, it requires further analysis for using integrity and privacy here, although it remains to be seen how changing this setting will, uh, will impact this uh, digest RPC scheme that's being used uh, with the various delegation tokens. So the symmetric cryptography. So it's relying on HMAC SHA-1, right, which is a cryptographic hash function uh, in combination with a secret key. And so for the example of a block access token, there will be thousands, or there, well, depending on the size of your cluster, right? I mean, clusters can, there, there are organizations with 30,000 plus nodes uh, split across 20 clusters, right? So you're talking about thousands of hosts. Uh, these keys get transmitted in clear text over the network, and uh, also uh, they get rekeyed from time to time. So if you miss it the first time, keep listening, right? And then there's the issue of pluggable web UI authentication. Uh, one thing I have not discussed to this point is that a number of the nodes and services in Hadoop have uh, user interfaces, uh, web user interfaces. And so how do you authenticate to these? That's a really important question. And unfortunately, that hasn't been implemented. There is uh, a pluggable web UI mechanism, but what that means is if at your company you're going to start using Hadoop and uh, you need to uh, protect the web UIs, you're going to have to write your own pluggable web UI mechanism. So the Hadoop developers have you know, expressed interest in having someone write, uh, write one based on SPNego, right? so they could use Kerberos. But uh, there are some challenges there as far as browser support and configuration and whatnot. So right now, there is no standard web UI authentication mechanism for, for Hadoop. And finally, IP-based authentication is in use. Uh, in some Hadoop deployments, uh, there will be the use of what are called HDFS proxies, and HDFS proxies will distribute data across, across a Hadoop cluster, uh, which is essential for performance. But the Hadoop platform uses the proxy's IP address and a database of roles in order to perform authentication and authorization. And I think we can probably all agree that uh, IP address is not a strong means of authentication, or at least we, I hope we can. So what are some alternative strategies, right, if, if this particular strategy isn't working? Well, one, one we can discuss is Hadoop over the Tahoe